Metroid was released for the Famicom in Japan in 1986, and a year later in North America. You play as Samus, an intergalactic bounty hunter whose mission it is to save the planet Zebus by infiltrating a research spaceship that has been overtaken by space pirates, who possess a recently discovered life form dubbed the Metroid, and are suspected of planning to use it as a biological weapon. The main objective is to get through the facility, which is scattered with various creatures made up of the Metroid, and destroy the mother brain which controls all of these beings. It's a side-scrolling run-and-gun, but you're not traversing through levels with linear paths. It's one great big massive map that you have to explore, and picking up certain items will grant you access to other areas of the maze, and weapon upgrades will help in terms of battling the more difficult enemies you'll run into in certain areas. This non-linear exploration, along with what is essentially a leveling up function, gives Metroid elements of an adventure game. It's not just a blind shoot 'em up Navigating your way through the maze can be overwhelming if you don't draw yourself a map, have a good memory, or have a copy of Nintendo Power, at least at the time before the internet was a thing. Yeah, there are different landscapes to give some identity to certain areas, but the fortress is still so dense that unless you've played the game a lot, you can easily lose track. The controls are responsive, but positioning yourself on narrow platforms can be tricky sometimes due to the light slipperiness in Samus's traction. Your health is represented by a number value, which you can replenish a bit at a time by grabbing these health balls that enemies drop, and if you come across these energy tanks, you'll add another 100 points to your max health, and it'll replenish your health in full on the spot. You can carry up to six of these E-Tanks, and there are eight hidden throughout the game. It's highly recommended to pick these bad boys up. Another item enemies drop are the missile refills. At first, you won't be able to hold any missiles, but if you find one of these missile icons in the wild, you'll get five missiles, and whenever you use them, you can start picking up the refills. There are a lot of these missile icons scattered around. Picking up more batches will add another five missiles to the maximum you can carry each time you grab one. So again, scarf up. The missiles themselves are more powerful than your regular attack, but they're also used to open locked doors. The blue doors take one shot of your regular attack, but the red doors take five missile shots. So you need to get the missiles to unlock these doors. And then late in the game, there are doors of other colors that take 10 missiles. To use the missiles, press select, your suit will change color, and missiles are now activated. Unfortunately, you can't toggle between missiles and your regular attack in the pause menu. You have to switch in real time, so be ready to adjust if you need to. The other big items you'll find, called power items, are usually found in these crystal balls resting atop a statue. Shoot it and grab said item. These range from weapon upgrades to jumping or armor enhancements. You'll come across these elevators from time to time that take you to another sector of the base, and the music changes from sector to sector, which is a nice touch in terms of helping you with your sense of direction and giving some identity to your location, and it cleanses the palette. Aside from giving you some kind of marker for where you are, these elevators also act as checkpoints. You don't get lives in this game, once you're dead, it's game over, but you get unlimited continues where you pick up from the last checkpoint, albeit with only 30 hit points with none of your tanks filled. You also get a password after you die, in case you want to pick up where you left off in another sitting. Although the password is long as fuck, it's still more reliable than a battery backup, because you never know if the damn thing is going to lose all your progress at some point. There are a pretty good number of enemies, but a lot of them do behave similarly to others. So there isn't a shit ton of variety, but there's definitely enough. There are also two mini-bosses, Craid and Ridley, that reside in separate deep areas of the building. You'll see statues of each of them in this one specific area where you need to build a bridge to get across and access the final area. When you kill each of them, you can shoot their respective statues, and when you shoot them both, the bridge will appear. So yeah, the ultimate goals are to kill these two mini-bosses and then Mother Brain right after, but there's a lot of ground to cover in between. Now there are lots of areas you technically don't need to explore to finish the game, and some that don't lead to anything useful at all, and you don't have to collect every energy tank and weapon upgrade, but like I said before, it's highly recommended to get as much as you can. 
and a good chunk of some of these highly recommended power-ups are hidden in pretty cryptic spots. So playing this for the first time with no map or a strategy guide will lead to a lot of tedious blasting at random blocks to see if there's a hidden area. And while the energy tanks help a lot, especially later in the game when you're able to hold a lot of them, you'll sometimes find yourself in a pickle with several relentless enemies double or triple teaming you all at once, and the aggressive bounce back you get from taking a hit really throws off your positioning, especially when you're over a fire pit and get knocked into it. Thankfully, these pits are not instant deaths, they'll just drain your health. Plus, there's the checkpoints and passwords, so while the game is very difficult and grueling, it's not what I'd call unforgiving. It just takes a lot of perseverance and patience. Metroid isn't perfect, it does get frustrating at times, but it's an absolute classic. Add in the fact that this is a very early NES game, there weren't many games at all at the time that were this deep. The ending was also one of the most memorable of all time, but I'll get into that in the walkthrough. When you start off, head left, hop up this way, and grab this ball called the Maru Marie, which allows you to curl up into a ball and roll around through tight spaces like this one on your way back. So now continue right and shoot down these zoomers who crawl along the perimeter of the room. They're too low to shoot head on from the floor, but if you can shoot them vertically when they're on the walls or ceiling, fire away. Then there are these bat-like creatures called screes that hang from the ceiling and swoop down on you. Aim straight up to wipe them out. Keep heading right, go through this door into this little room, and open the next door where you'll meet these flying fucks called Rios that are also too low to shoot straight on, but they'll try to attack you by flying upwards, so dodge them and shoot them from underneath. Go through the next door, and you're now in the first vertical corridor. Scale your way up all the platforms which are littered with zoomers and rippers, who just fly back and forth in the air slowly. They won't attack you, they just get in your way and hurt you upon contact, but they're immune to your bullets. Keep going up, go through the first door you come across, and pass through the connecting room to the second vertical corridor. Head down until you see a door on the right, Head through, and you'll come across these pipes with these flying pricks called Zebs that dash out at you once they're horizontally aligned with you. When you blast them, another will come out of the same pipe, and it's an infinite loop. They'll only stop coming when they drop an item, but once you collect it, more will keep coming. There are many other spots in the game where you'll come across these, and they're a good source for farming health and missiles. Speaking of missiles, shortly after this you'll find your first batch, giving you 5 you can use. Every time you find another batch, your max amount will increase by 5, and you can get refills of 2 at a time by grabbing missiles that are dropped by enemies. Turn around and head back to the second vertical hallway and keep backtracking to the first vertical corridor. Head up until you get to a door on your left. Take it and head down this hallway until you get to a red door, which you'll need to use 5 missiles to unlock. Your regular gun won't do shit. You'll come across a statue holding a crystal ball. Shoot it to reveal the long beam, which increases the range of your gun. Now go back, and be sure to grab any missiles that get dropped. You're gonna want to use these again soon. When you get back to the blue corridor, don't go up, but if you did, just for the sake of reference for later, you'd come across a door which brings you into a room that leads you to another red door. Unlock it, and you'll see a fire pit and a large gap blocking your access to the room on the other side. This is where you'll need to build the bridge to access the last area, called Torian, by defeating the too many bosses represented by these statues. So back to where you were, drop down the corridor, and pass through the door to the second corridor. Go straight ahead to the next door, and you'll meet these things called wavers that fly around in these quick wavy patterns. Evade them, or slip under them for a vertical attack. Head through this room, go through the next door where a waver will be hanging out in, shoot it or roll on past it. Head through the next room, which leads to another segue room with a waver, and the room after that will lead you to your first energy tank. Continue to the right, go through the next door to the third vertical corridor, head up the platforms, and bang a left through the first door you see. 
at the end of that room you'll find another red locked door so refill your missiles if you haven't already and shoot the door down where you'll find another statue this one giving you the bomb power up which lets you drop bombs when you're in curled up ball mode scale your way up the platforms until you get to a door on the right head inside and there's lots of waivers trying to annoy the shit out of you deal with them and shortly after that is a seemingly dead end but there is a way through now that you've got the bomb blow up this block and roll through you can roll through these pipes but be mindful of the zoomers that hang out in here take them out with bombs if they get in your way take the top pipe which leads to a door which leads to a segue leading to another room remember this segue room a little later on but for now keep going and you'll end up in a tight space battling these cretins but after a short struggle with that you'll come across a missile refill after that it seems like you're at a dead end but you can shoot through these ceiling blocks here which will lead you into the small room use the bombs to get up and through the wall which leads you to an energy tank so now go back through the door at the bottom of the second vertical corridor, past the area you collected your first missiles, through another door, and take the elevator to the next wing, which also serves as a checkpoint in case you die. There's a door to the left and the right. Go through the left one, and you'll meet the Garuda, which takes a lot of shots to kill and flies pretty fast. And although they gravitate towards you when you're close, they're pretty blind and won't be able to sense you if you're far enough away. If they're close, use missiles and replenish them later from smaller enemies. Grab the missiles and watch out for this air hole that fires out these spherical fireball looking things called polyps. Wait for the opening before moving though, you can't destroy the source. When you get to the dead end, set off a bomb to blow out the block and roll through, and continue to bomb whatever block is barricading you and roll through. Enter the door and you're in a short vertical passageway. Drop down, enter the door, and you'll come across another batch of missiles. These little dumbasses are called mellows, and they don't really do anything as long as you don't walk right up to them. They just flutter around. Waste them. Now go back to the double door room at the beginning of the area, and go right. Hop across all the platforms, it's loaded with zoomers, and you'll meet these things called squeeps that pop out of the lava and drop back down. They're very straightforward, just wait for the opening to pass through, or shoot them down if you want some items. These blocks right here can be blasted through, although they will regenerate after a short time, so don't hang around in the area for too long or it can knock you off into the fire pit. If you happen to fall into the fiery sea below, you won't die, but it'll drain health the longer you're in there, so jump out ASAP. Go through the next door, drop down, and blow up some bombs in the floor to get down to this hidden area. Continue downward, head into the first door you see, and you'll meet the dragons, who pop out from the lava and spit a few fireballs at you before going back down again. Wait for the opening to pass through, just keep in mind that there are a few of these bastards. You'll come to another red door, blast it with missiles to get in, and destroy the crystal for a high jump power up, which gives you extra height in your jumps. Now go back to where you blasted the hole in the floor, shoot your way back up and keep jumping until the bottom block regenerates underneath you so you can get enough height to go back up. Scale your way up the platforms all the way until you get to the last door. Make your way through and shortly after you'll get not one, not two, but three batches of missiles. Then head back out, go to the top of the corridor and blast a hole in the block here to get another hidden area. Go through the door, and it'll lead you to another couple of missile batches. And now you're really starting to stock up on heavy artillery. When you get to the dead end, bomb a hole against the wall and roll through, continuing to bomb through when you get to the end, and you'll meet the multi-violas, which bounce around the room. They take a decent amount of shots, so either be patient and shoot them down, or just run through when there's room. Head through the next door, drop down and go through the one right after and bomb your way through the next wall into this room with a crystal you can destroy for an ice beam which lets you freeze certain enemies solid for a short period of time use missiles to unlock the red door on the side bomb a hole in the block of the wall just off the ground when the dragons give you some breathing room and you'll go through another door that'll take you to the purple vertical passage coming out of the first door you skipped 
Go back through the second door from the bottom to go back to the elevator you originally came from and go back to the second corridor and scale your way up to the top door and back through the pipes and to the segue room I mentioned earlier that you'd want to remember. Blast through the ceiling to get up here, go through the door into this room that'll lead you to a red door. Unlock it with missiles and destroy the ball for the Varia suit, which cuts the damage you normally take in half. Now go back to the first corridor and through the door at the bottom to where you first got in from. After rolling back under this passage, use the ice gun to freeze this prick on his way down to give you a boost up and blast the block up here for a hidden energy tank. Then go back through the next door which leads to the very first segue room you first entered at the very beginning of the game. Bomb these blocks to lead you down, scale the platforms down, and enter the door to the elevator to another zone of the fortress. Drop down a bit, blast your way through the red door on your right, and you'll meet the Gigas, which do the same bullshit as the others that pop out of the pipe and fly towards you when they line up with you. Shortly after are some missiles. There's an area you can't explore ahead of here, but it doesn't lead to anything important, so unless you feel like messing around in the area, just turn around and back through the door you came in. Drop down for another red door you need to unlock, blow up a hole in the wall here, and roll through for an energy tank. If bombing your way through the intricate spaces leads you to the fire pit, don't worry about it. As long as you have enough health to get through, your energy refills entirely. Set up your next bomb to send you up through this gap in the wall and roll your way back. Drop down a bit and enter the door on the left. You'll come to a wall, but you can get through a hidden passage by using bombs to give you a boost, and grab the missiles up here. Drop down here all the way to the bottom and slip through the fire pit to a hidden area, avoiding the rippers on the way down as much as you can. Pass through these two segue rooms into the hallway using the missiles to unlock the red door, and while you can into this hidden area by blowing up bombs in the floor in the second segue room, you're just going to end up walking around in a circle, and there's nothing of note in here aside from the novelty of seeing a fake version of Kraid, the boss you're going to be meeting up with in just a little bit. Instead, just continue on straight, kill the sidehoppers and gigas, and grab the missiles. After passing through the next door, climb up and take a left through the segue room, and use the bombs to spring your way up and roll through these narrow passages. Now you'll want to head to the area straight above here, and you have two options of getting there. Either stay moving left through the door, and follow the linear path through the next door, up the vertical corridor and back right and the door will lead to the platforms above where you started where you'll next want to hop up this way a bit and then drop down to the right side into this nook or you can use the ice beam to freeze the rippers on your way up you'll have to freeze them in the right spots so you can reach them upon jumping and you'll want to lean to the right so you can access that same nook we were just talking about either way you'll want to freeze this ripper to get you up this red door Head through this hallway and drop down to the left and enter the door where you'll get some more missiles. Head back out, drop all the way to the bottom, enter this door, head through the hallway and enter another door. And you're now at the gate of one of the two mini bosses, Crate. He'll throw horns at you straight on and in an arc pattern. You can freeze his projectile and then hit him with missiles when you maneuver around them, but this does take longer and gets frustrating. My preference is to make sure you go in with full health, which if you're low enough is a tedious process in and of itself, because you're probably going to want to farm up from the infinite gigas in the room right before the fight. But once you're maxed out, roll up against him and unleash a barrage of bombs. You're going to take hits and get backed up, but fuck it, just keep spamming him with this and soon enough you'll take him out. Now that you've defeated him, you can go back to the area where you need to build the bridge and unlock half of the puzzle by shooting the Kraid statue, but there's no point in doing that now. But first thing you're going to want to do is get the energy tank from down here in this hidden block. Blast it, and then climb back up so you can roll down and fit into the gap and pick it up. The block will regenerate if you take too long, but once you pick it up, your energy is refilled and it doesn't matter. Go back to where you came, and climbing back up this long vertical corridor can be a real bitch. You gotta shoot the blocks out of your way, and continue shooting vertically so you can jump up and let them regenerate underneath you. But if they regenerate in place of you, it'll knock you over, 
So best bet is to be hugging the left side because if you fall, you might land on one of these platforms and you won't have to start over from the beginning. You can also just commit suicide and continue back at the elevator, but you'll have to restock your health. So pick your poison here. Either way, get back to the elevator and out. Back through the two main vertical corridors and through the bottom door of the second corridor and straight through to get back to the elevator on the other side where we were at before. Bang a right at the fork and head straight through to get to the purple vertical corridor. Drop down to the bottom and head through the door. Wipe out the gamuts, which behave just like the zebs. They dash out at you from these pipes when they're horizontally aligned with you. They're just stronger. There are also a few Garudas in here, so get the missiles ready for them. Blast the blocks in your way here, and when you get to the dead end, use your bombs to give yourself a boost and lay a bomb in mid-air to blast a hole in the wall here and roll through it. And it'll lead to not one, but two batches of missiles. Go back to the purple corridor, blow up holes in the ground just like earlier, but now we're going to explore the areas we didn't earlier. Go through the first door on the left that leads you to where you got the high jump power up, blow a hole in the ground, and roll through to bomb your way through the wall. Freeze these pricks to give you a boost up these walls, and be careful on these very small bubble platforms on your way to the next door. After going through another segway room, you'll get another room, this one with gamuts and multi-violas. And the next room looks like it's just another segway room, but if you blast through the ceiling here, you can head up for a hidden area. Go through the door, and head through the next room to a red door you'll need to unlock, and you'll get the screw attack, which lets you execute a flippy attack when you perform a jump while moving horizontally. Now go back to where you came from and bomb holes in the floor here to get back to the Segway room and bang a left this time. Head through this room which is also full of gamuts and multi-violas, enter the next door and drop all the way to the bottom for a hidden area you'll need to bomb out the floor to access. Continue dropping down, enter the door and blast the blocks to clear a path to another Segway room. Blow up the floor here to drop down and a door at the bottom will lead you to two batches of missiles being guarded by side hoppers. Once you've got them, go back, bang a right from the segway room, hop carefully across these narrow platforms, and you'll enter another segway room through the door at the end. From here, bomb out the floor and drop down through the lava to a hidden area. Go left, and it'll lead you to a red door you'll need to unlock, and waiting behind the door is a wave beam weapon upgrade. Now go back to the Segway room, continue right, blast your way through the blocks to get against the wall, and blow up a chunk of the wall to roll through. Hop across the narrow platforms and you'll get another batch of missiles. Now go back to the purple corridor, drop all the way to the bottom, enter the door, and head through this room where you'll deal with side hoppers and dragons. When you get to the next door, drop down and head through this door, and you'll hit up another elevator down. Take a left, pass through the two segway rooms, but before you go through the second one, shoot the blocks here and make your way up for a hidden area. Go through the door, and you'll meet these flying fox called Holtz. They swoop down from the ceiling and fly back up. They take a lot of hits, so the missiles are preferred to wipe them out. And you probably want to use missiles against the Gigas, cause this is a tight space, and you'll reach another batch of missiles at the end of the road here, as well as a couple of desk gigas, who are pretty powerful, so freeze them, get the missiles, and don't bother with them. Then go back to where you blast through the ceiling and bomb your way back down, head left, and when you get through this door, there'll be a nest of desk gigas in this hall. Instead of worrying about them, bomb a hole in the ground here and roll your way all the way across the room. You'll need to do this anyway if you want to get to the item in this room, cause the beam will block you if you go overhead. Pop out, blast through the red door, and get the energy tank, but don't run across the floor cause there's a hidden gap in the floor just before you get to it. Jump over it to get to the energy tank, and then drop down the gap intentionally. Take a right through the door, blast away at all the desk gigas, head through the door, and you'll need to pull off a little trick to get up through this gap where you'll have to roll yourself over the edge, unroll yourself, and then jump up and going through this door will lead you to another batch of missiles. Then drop down through the gap and bang a left. 
You'll have a bunch of zoomers and holtzes in this room with narrow platforms to boot. Farm up on health and missiles if you can, because at the end of this hallway is the next boss, Ridley. He jumps around up and down slowly while hurling purple fireballs that swirl around. Nudge your way through this shit and spam him with missiles. He might knock you back a few times, but as long as you have a lot of health and enough missiles, don't worry about it, you'll finish him off soon enough and get an increase of 75 missiles on the spot. You'll need 10 of these missiles to open up this pink door, use the bombs to get yourself up, and I know this looks bad, there are holtzes in a pit of fire in front of you, but unless you're almost out of health, in which case you just need to go back and fill up some energy from enemies in the previous room, you can just walk over this shit because there's an energy tank right after and your energy is replenished. And now you should be maxed out at 6 energy tanks at this point. Now you're going to want to go back to the elevator, but you're going to have to go a different way since you can't climb up the huge gap you dropped earlier. Instead, go back through the room you came in to the spot where you dropped, and then go through the right side door. You'll have a long corridor of multi-violas, and at the end you'll reach another vertical corridor. Scale up all these platforms, wiping out all the zoomers and zebos, which are just another sprite of more or less the same dickheads that pop out of the pipes. Go all the way up to the top to the last door on the left, and you'll get another room of Holtz's, Zoomers, and Zebos. The door at the end takes you to the room with the elevator you're going to want to take back up. Now as weird as this sounds, you're actually going to want to downgrade your weapon back to the Ice Beam. Because guess what? You absolutely need it to finish this game in the last segment. But how do you do that? Well, once you get back to the second vertical corridor, when you climb up to the part where there are two doors on each side, take a right, go through, and keep going right until you get to the second Segway room. I repeat, the second Segway room, because you can blow up a hole in the floor of the first Segway room, but you'll drop into this room and you're absolutely fucked without the ice beam because you can't freeze these pricks and use them as platforms to get back up. You otherwise need to commit suicide or revert to the most recent password you saved. Instead, blow up a hole in the ground here in the second Segway room, drop all the way to the bottom, bang a left, and you'll reach a red door at the end of the room that leads to another ice beam. And now you can go to the bridge with the statues, shoot them, and the bridge will form. Roll on through, and the door will lead you to the elevator down to the final segment of the game. It's not nearly as complex of a layout as the last area, but it's a bigger pain in the ass, especially thanks to these Metroids, who are the reason you need the Ice Beam. They float around the room and try to engulf you, which they'll stick to you like a fly on shit, which sucks out a ton of your energy. You can bomb your way out of this, but it takes a lot of effort because these pricks are so persistent. And even if you do get out, they'll, or other fellow Metroids nearby, will gang up on you and you're fucked. They're unavoidable no matter how many missiles or beams you fire, they're gonna get to you. It's basically a guarantee. But if you have the ice beam, you can freeze them. So drop your way down, try to give yourself some distance so you can connect with them, and just keep on going until you get to the orange door on the bottom, and pump 10 missiles into it to move on. Then you'll encounter these floating fire rings called rinkas. They float very slowly, but their strength is in numbers, so freeze them, or just run by if there's enough room, and be ready to freeze up the Metroids that inhabit this room. You'll go through a red door next, into this vertical corridor with more Rinkas and Metroids. The spaces are tight, so you may want to utilize your roll when you get surrounded to minimize your target size, and watch where you land when you drop. You'll reach another red door, and it's home stretch time. More Metroids in this hallway, and the next room is the Big Kahuna. These glass capsules that are called Zebatites block your path. Wipe them out with the missiles, but watch the Rinkas and the guns that try to fuck you up from virtually everywhere. You might have to drop down from time to time and zap a few of these pricks before climbing back up to finish off the Zebatite. There's a few of these in a row, and you'll get to Mother Brain, which doesn't send any attacks directly or move at all even, but it's in control of everything. Get in this spot, as most of the guns in the area can't reach it, and use the gap where the Zebatite was to unload missiles into Mother Brain. You'll have to retreat from time to time to dodge the gunfire and send the Rinkas to hell. So be patient, but aware. If you get hit, your bounce back is going to require you to reposition yourself. After a shitload of hits, 
while the brain is destroyed, but you're not done yet. You gotta get the hell out of here, because there's a self-destruct mechanism that just went off, and you've got 999 accelerated seconds to leave. There are no more enemies left since Mother Brain powered everything, but you've got to scale up this vertical corridor with small platforms. It's mostly the same pattern of platforms that are directly above you, with others off to the side. You can either jump out and swing yourself back to land on the platform above you, or do smaller jumps to get to the side platform, which will let you actually skip the platform that was directly above you to the one above that. I'd say whichever technique you feel more comfortable with, stick with it. Like I said, the clock is accelerated, so you really only have a couple minutes before you go kablooey. But there's enough time to get up there, no matter which method you choose, as long as you don't fall down too many times. If you do fall, try to land on a platform to save yourself time. Every platform is on one of four different vertical columns all the way up, so line yourself up accordingly if you do fall. When you get to the elevator at the top, you're done with the game, and you'll get the ending where Samus rips off the suit to reveal... She's a woman! Holy shit! This was truly a masterclass in subverting your expectations in 1986. Unless you knew about this, you did not see this coming. The faster you finish the game, the more revealing her outfit is because, you know, since only men play video games, you have to be rewarded with eye candy. The credits roll, and after they're done, you can now start the game without the suit. So that's it for Metroid, but there would be a sequel, Metroid 2, Return of Samus, which was interestingly only available on the Game Boy. But we'll get to that one another time. And that wraps up this edition of Aqualung's Game Reviews. See you next time.